Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Smack Talk. Episode 32. Episode 32. We made it yep. this far, Kyle. Yep, the hate mail hasn't been too bad, so we're still here. No, we're still here. Oh, yeah, I'm Bobby Watts, by the way. And I'm Kyle Stacy. Yeah, we're your hosts for today. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so this is episode 32. We made it to 31, yep. which was our first episode of this new season, mm-hmm. and I think it went really well. It's cool. We got a new video platform on Vimeo. Yeah, I think Vimeo's working out really well. Yeah, so far so good. Seemed to be some good feedback. Yeah. Everybody seems really happy. Limit, Very limited hate mail, as yeah. Kyle said. Not too bad. Um, so if you guys ever have any issues downloading or taking a look or viewing the videos, then hit us up on smacktalkrc.com. We can help you out. But I know for sure that going through Vimeo, the emails were a lot less than our traditional older platform. So right. I think we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, it's just easier to use now. It is. It's awesome. And yep. It's 4K, and you can stream it on your iPad or your smart TV or whatever. And your smart fridge or however you want to watch your it. Your smart fridge, maybe yep. your watch. Can your watch watch it? Your Apple Watch? We'll find out, won't we? Maybe one day. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so what yep. are we talking about? 32. ESCs. We're covering everything about ESCs today. ESCs. I yep. think that's a good topic because uh, electric, I'm a nitro guy at heart. Mm. But I think electric is very much taking over. It is. And it has taken over. Yeah. Nitro's dying. Yeah, it sucks. Just like Tesla. Tesla's taking over. Oh, man. Okay. But, uh, so what are we talking about today? What, what are we getting into? What? Oh, man. We're covering a lot. We're covering governors. Governors. Setup. Yep. What to look for. Pros and cons. And a special little interview. Ooh. Yep. An interview mm-hmm. with a good friend of ours, perhaps. Yep. yep. Good and guy. He, he makes speed controllers. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he can tell us how hard it is to make a speed controller. <laughs> it's a lot more and, complicated than you think. And why you should never try to make a speed controller yourself. <laughs> even, even if you know how to do it, just don't even think about it. Don't even bother. Yeah, not... No need. N- not good at all. Nope. So uh, we're going to be talking about that, covering some BECs. Mm-hmm. Talk yep. about BECs, talk about gearing. Yep. Uh, I'll do some flying for you guys, show, mm-hmm. showing you what we look for in a, in a governor, uh, how to read a graph. Yes, that's right. Yeah, analyzing a graph. Yeah. So this is going to be a good one. Probably pretty technical, just like the last one. Yeah. Pretty technical here. We'll liven it up a little bit with the interview. Yep. And uh, it should be good because these ESCs are hard, man. They And they work off smoke. They do. And if the smoke comes out, you just got to put it back in real quick. <laughs> yeah. So when the smoke comes out, they don't work anymore. <laughs> so they, they need to sell the refillable smoke cartridges. That'd be nice. That'd be really good. That's the ticket right Just there. like the vape cartridges. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, this is 32, all yep. about ESCs. Let's yep. get into it. Here we go. You know what a governor does, Bobby? I sure do. Why don't you tell the good folks at home, what does a governor do, Kyle? A governor keeps your RPM the same no matter what maneuver you're doing. Hopefully. Ideally. Hopefully. That's yep. the goal. Yeah, because back in the day, we didn't have governors. I know, right? So when ESCs kind of first came out, they didn't exist. Nope. So what happened? What did we do? Fix them points. Either Fixed 80%, points. like 90%, or if you're wild like Bert, you just run 100%. Just go full tilt. Exactly. Yep. Because the ESCs feel like airplanes were first. Yep. With the ESCs, the helicopters, we didn't have any love at first. Yeah, no love. And they just told us, oh yeah, just run a flat line, it'll be awesome. So you just dial in a flat line mm-hmm. and it just gives that same amount of power the whole flight. But the problem with that is you get overspeed, you get underspeed, and then it would never come back because it's not holding anywhere. It's just going, here we are. Yeah, and then the worst part especially, I remember the early days uh, when I was competing in 2009, 2010, I was getting pressure saying, oh yeah, you need to compete with electric. I'm like, why would I compete with electric? My head speed's a gajillion RPM in the beginning of the flight. Then at the very, very end of the flight, when I really need to finish strong, the battery's dead, so the head speed's low. Yep, we got nothing. Nothing. So 
governor mode was invented. Yep. Everyone nowadays should be using governor mode. You should use governor. If you fly a helicopter with a battery, it should be on governor mode. Yep. And if you're flying governor mode, there's two ways to do it. Yep. There's the ESC governor and then your internal fly barless governor. Correct. So I personally run the V-bar governor. You run your V-bar control governor. That's right. V-bar control through the V-bar Neo. Okay. Reason for that is I can set the exact RPM. Yep. I can tune it. I can change it depending on where I'm going. And it's just, it's always the same no matter when I fly. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. I think that's, that's a, there's a lot to be said for that. Yep. So if he runs internal governor, sometimes I run external governor. So with my Scorpion Tribunus um, or something small like my Fireball mm-hmm. uh, has a little hobby wing. I believe it's a hobby wing ESC and it's an internal ESC with an internal governor. Sorry. It's an internal governor in the ESC right. and there's no telemetry or anything out of the ESC. So I'm running external governor. So I'm running the governor that's built inside the uh, ESC. ESC itself. So let's start with the external governor, which would be Correct. the ESC governor. Correct. What are some pros and cons? Pros is e- probably easier to set up. Yeah, you just kind of plug it in and it works yep. usually. <laughs> Calibrate the, the endpoints, done, ready to fly. Yep, that's it. Uh, but there's less tuning. You can't really get into the deep. If you really love tuning and changing all these parameters, you, you can, but yep. there's more involved. It just kind of works out of the box typically. Exactly. And the other thing too is if you're running a governor mode that's built into your ESC, a lot of times you're going to need like a computer or some sort of a programming card or some sort of interface to program that. So when you go to program it, you're going to need a plugin on plugin go test fly. You know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work to to get parameters changed throughout the day versus if you have like telemetry for example and like with Kyle and the uh, V-Bar control mm-hmm. you can just run the governor mode and do all your changes inside the radio which is really nice yeah um, so if you're running internal governor as Kyle said there's a lot of advantages to that but I've heard see this is where we kind of differ because we hear some different things so I've been told that if someone's running a governor mode in their fly barless controller let's just say that perhaps Perhaps it's not as fast as a internal ESC governor can be mm-hmm. because I'm told that the internal ESC governor can make all these calculations many times a second versus a governor mode that's done with your fly bar list unit perhaps you're limited to the uh, refresh rate of the uh, signal being sent between the transmitter and the receiver that's right so at the end of the day it's kind of up to you right it's all personal preference. I can't sit here and tell you, oh, you're going to go run this and you're going to have perfect success because it just doesn't work that way. It's all, it's a personal preference. I run V-Bar Governor because it works for me. Yep. Someone like Bobby's going to run the, the Hobbywing Governor's Fireball because it works. It's, it all yep. comes down to what you want to do. It's, it's, exactly. it's just personal preference. Exactly. But, uh, one thing I found with like running an ESC Governor, it's harder to dial in the exact RPM. Either you're going to need some sort of telemetry or you're going to need a tachometer. Exactly. Yep. But once again, it's a, it's a little complicated because depending on the ESC, uh, you set it up differently. right? Mm-hmm. So in this whole episode, we can't cover the whole setup of every single ESC. So we're just kind of overviewing here. But for example, if you were to run the Castle Governor, you could just set your throttle, endpo- your, your throttle curve at a certain percentage, and that's going to correlate to a head speed that you type in on the computer. Yep. So once again, you need a computer. Mm-hmm. But I believe they now have some telemetry, so you can do it in your radio, which is nice. But if you look at an ESC like a Contronic or something, mm-hmm. you just dial up a number on your throttle curve, and then, as you mentioned, you need a tack. Mm-hmm. And so that's, it's really up to you and what you want to do and, and how you want to proceed with that. Basically, there's really no wrong way to do it. There's really no right or wrong way. And while we're talking about governors, let's just talk about gearing for governor mode. Ooh. Right? How very, about that? Very important. So with when we ran fixed endpoints, you would kind of set the gearing so that you were maybe at like an 80%, 90% throttle curve the whole time, and that's where you flew. Mm-hmm. But now with governor mode, what do we do, Kyle? What's the skill? What's the, what's the tactic with governor mode? How do we gear it? Well, we gear it. It's similar. You need some overhead. The reason the term overhead is so that if you ever need to add more RPM, if you load the, load the helicopter you need to add more RPM, you need to have room for the governor to push more RPM to the rotor head. Correct. So we have to gear it so, I think you said 80%, I still follow that same rule where you want to be about 80% so you have some leftover room. So we do that so we can A, maintain the RPM, yep. and then B, have enough room to go above if it needs to. Correct. Alright, so what do I do if my throttle curves at like 60% straight across and the helicopter's screaming at like a 3000 RPM, what do I do? You're going to want to go down in a pulley or a pinion. You want to spin it slower so that you can get a higher percentage to get the desired RPM. 
Correct. And that's all personal preferences and testing and flying styles and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But yeah. as Kyle mentioned, for governor mode, you want to kind of over gear it so that if it's at a true 100%, that thing's going to be screaming. You want to back it down to your maybe 80%, mm -hmm. got some overhead, and you should be good to go. Yep. Also, correct gearing keeps everything running cooler as well. Correct. ESC is more efficient, your batteries are going to be happier, and your motor is going to run cooler. So gearing is incredibly important. Exactly. And it also works too because if you have a less powerful battery or a more powerful battery, the governor is going to keep it at the same RPM, and therefore a less per, a, a, a older battery could theoretically perform pretty close to a new battery. That's right. So mm -hmm. works works for everybody. So governor mode, use it or lose it. But you better use it. But you better <laughs> use it. All right, let's move on. Next. Okay, so now let's discuss BECs. So what is a BEC? BEC stands for Battery Eliminating Circuit. So back when I started flying, so maybe 10, 12 years ago, a lot of the speed controllers that were really popular for the big aircraft, um, if, not even helis at that time, but mainly the big planes and such, were all opto, meaning they don't have a BEC built in. And a BEC is what allows you to take your main flight battery, and it, it's just a regulator really, and it steps down the voltage to anywhere from five to eight volts so that your servos and your receiver and everything else can operate without a separate battery pack. So I would say maybe in the late 2000s, as the ESCs got better, the BECs really didn't and they were pretty unreliable and i remember smashing a decent amount of helicopters due to bec failure which is never good we don't like that at all um so because it's i think it's a pretty hard problem to solve here right because you've got anywhere from maybe sometimes 200 amps going through your esc and you're trying to step down at, at you know at 50 volts and you're trying to step down to five volts at 10 amps or something so it's a pretty complicated engineering feat and luckily the becs have come a long way so now if you buy an ESC with a built-in BEC, you're usually pretty good. You got really nothing to worry about. Um, so for example, this is my Tribunus here, um, 200 amp, and this uh, has a built-in BEC of, I believe, uh, 10 amps, uh, continuous, and probably 15 or 20 amp burst, which is really all you need. Um, so I prefer to have a built-in BEC on pretty much everything I fly now, if I can. Um, so in addition to a BEC, I also like to use a backup guard. Um, this is the Scorpion backup guard. There's also an OptiPower backup guard, and it's super simple. It's just an additional battery, where if for any reason your battery disconnects or your BEC fails internally, you'll have a fighting chance of getting down to the ground with a backup guard. So I do like running that, and I'll show you how I got that set up here in a second. Um, so for, for a BEC, choosing a BEC, there's really two ways. So one, you can choose a ESC with a BEC combo that is just ready to go out of the box. So it's all in one unit. And Kyle and I like to use something that, once again, it's at least 10 amps continuous because some of the servos now, they're higher power. And I've heard that they can stall at around four amps per piece. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of current going through a little servo. So if you have three on your swash, even 12, so pushing 12 amps, maybe another one or two amps for your tail servo here, you're going to be pushing a lot of amps. So try to go with something at least for 10 amps continuous. And if you can burst up to 15 or 20, that's even better. Um, the next part about a BEC that I look at is how many wires go into the receiver. Um, a lot of the BECs carry the load over two servo plugs that plug into your, uh, your fly barless unit or your receiver. So I would definitely recommend that if there's two of them, plug them both in. They're in parallel. If one unplugs, you'll have the other. And it's also just sharing the current, which is really, really good. Um, so the BECs, you can get your built-in one, and then you can also get a separate BEC, a standalone BEC, so separate. So you can have an Opto ESC with a separate BEC. And I guess the products, the brands that we really like, I've had really good luck with the Western Robotics, the Super Hercules, I believe. Um, a few years ago, I was using that for a while with really good luck. And the Castle BECs are really good, the, the black ones, the Pro. Um, those are really nice too. But just keep it in mind, BECs are really important because, uh, you know, if you can't talk to your receiver and your servos, then what good is all that power, right? So anyway, let me just show you something that I've got here. Just a little cool tip. I'm not going to get into the setup of it, but I'm just going to show you how I use my backup guard here. So I'm going to plug my aircraft in here. 
and I'm running, once again, I'm running uh, 50 volts. So two, 12S here. So my aircraft's gonna fire up here. So I'm connected here. So what I'm gonna do is I turn on my backup guard and it's super simple. A red light lights up when I have my backup guard. And so on my V-bar control here, I've got 8.3 volts because I'm running eight volts from my Tribunus, which is awesome. So a little tip, and we'll probably show you a little bit more if you're a V-bar control user, we'll show you how to do this in a future episode here. But what I like to have is I like knowing the fact that if my batteries come unplugged or if for whatever reason the ESC takes a dump, then I'm going to have a fighting chance with my uh, backup guard here to at least hit hold, auto rotate down and maybe land flat on the skids. That's best case scenario. That's awesome. So if I'm flying around and my battery unplugs or my BEC fails, so batteries unplug, just a second or two, so you can see. Receiver 5.0. So I've got an alarm triggered and it says five volts right here. So I'm on my backup guard and it's very loud. It's very noticeable. And I'm still moving around. Servos are all just fine. So that right there would probably give me, all I need is like 10 seconds. Just give me 10 seconds to hit, hold, and come down and land. So I would definitely recommend running a backup guard of some sort, Scorpion OptiPower. There's a few other brands out there. Um, I like it. It makes me feel safe. I can sleep better at night. So, uh, so yeah, so that's a short segment here on BECs, and let's move on. All right, so let's get right into it. We get asked this question all the time. What ESC should I get? You know, I just got brand new helicopter X and I need to put an ESC in it. What should I use? Well, that's kind of a loaded question and here's the secret. There's no right or wrong answer and don't pay attention to what we say. Honestly, I think the biggest factor out there is what can you get help with and what are your buddies flying? Uh, if you're at a field and maybe you fly with two or three other guys and they swear by brand X, then go with brand X. Um, if you read on the forums a lot and know maybe have an active uh, presence on the forums, then maybe you should uh, go with whatever they recommend on there. Um, Kyle and I use different brands of ESCs. Bert kind of uses a little bit of everything as well. So there's really no right or wrong answer. So I'm just going to throw that one out there. There's really no right or wrong answer. Now, um, what Kyle and I decided to do was talk about the four top or most popular brands for 700 class electric ESCs. Um, these four brands have kind of proven themselves time again to make really good products and there's no right or wrong answer in here. There's no better ESC or worse ESC. Uh, we're just going to try to cover all four of these and kind of talk about some of their features and why you might want to go with that ESC versus another one. So, beginning with Castle Creations. Uh, Castle Creations was the first ESC manufacturer out there to come out with a heli ESC, like a true helicopter ESC. Um, I believe back in 2007, 2008, when I started messing with Big Electrics, Castle was the ESC that we went with. They were the first one to have a governor mode, if I recall correctly. It's either them or Contronic. Um, but the Castle stuff was really nice, really easy to set up, and they've progressed over time and their lines have really been expanding. They've got lots of different product lines. Um, they are here in the USA, in Kansas, I believe. They're assembled here in the USA from components of all countries. Um, they've got a great internal governor set up. It's super easy to set up. You just use their Castle Link PC software and you set your, the exact head speed that you want. And you tell it your gearing, you tell it your motor pulls, and using their software, you can just get the exact head speed that you want without any sort of uh, tacking. You don't need a tack to set your head speed. So that's really nice. Uh, the setup for the ESC overall is just really simple. It's very straightforward. I've never had a problem with it. Um, depending on which line of ESC you go with, they have a BEC or it's an Opto. But for the uh, models that do have a BEC, I believe the Talon has a really strong BEC, uh, two wires coming out which go right to your receiver which is great for redundancy and uh, it just works, plain and simple it just works, which is really nice. It saves you from having to put a BEC or a LiPo battery on your machine, which is really nice. 
Uh, as we mentioned before, the governor tuning is super simple. Uh, I believe there's just one button for gain, and then you can set your head speed, which is awesome. Um, the thing that I think stands out for Castle the best is I would call it the best value ESC. Um, the price is relatively inexpensive, so it's not going to break the bank. You know, when you buy, sometimes when you buy RC helis, the ESC is just as much, if not more, than the kit. But Castle's not this way. I know that their ESCs are the most cost effective out of all these ESCs out there. Um, the next thing that I think Castle really stands out with is data logging. Their data logging is really nice, and I think they were the first to put it in and, and uh, use it and make it really popular, I think. So you can log everything from voltage, wattage, amperage, temperature, all sorts of things. And it saves multiple flights. I think it can save maybe like 20 or 30 flights in there. You can pull up the graph using their program. You can email it to their customer service if you ever have a problem. So that's really nice. I think the data logging, they, they've got the best data logging out there. And then last but not least, multiple product lines. So they've got lots of different ESCs to choose from depending on your application. Uh, they've been around for a while and they're really doing it well. So that's Castle. All right, so first up is Hobbylink. This is the brand that I personally run. I run the V4 160 amp on pretty much every 700 I have. It works great. It's got a very strong BEC. It's super easy to program, just works great. So let's run through the list. First is the internal governor. There's two different modes. They have Elf Governor and Governor Store. Governor Store works really well because what you can do is you calibrate it for your worst battery so that you take the weakest battery and it'll perform the same as your strongest battery. So no matter which pack you have in, an old pack, a new pack, you're going to get the same power no matter what. Uh, up after that is an optional fan. So if you're running like speed and you really want to keep the ESC cool, there's an optional fan that mounts to it with screws and then plugs into the ESC. No soldering required, two screws hold it on, works really well and keeps the ESC really cool. After that is just the super easy setup. Uh, it, it, you can get a program box, you run through each setting, you set the BEC, you set the uh, throttle hold bailout, governor setup, some governor tuning features, just everything is inside that program box. Also at that box is how you do updates. So you go from the ESC to the box to the computer, you load updates, super easy, super simple. Uh, after that is the BEC. Uh, the BEC in it, I think it's 10 amp with 20 amp burst, but the thing is, is for the big ESCs, it's only in the 160. So if you buy the 200 amp, you're going to have to either solder in a BEC or use a receiver pack. But the ESC is super strong, uh, I've had zero issues ever, it's got plenty of power, no issues whatsoever. Um, after that is Easy Governor Tuning. So if you're going to use their internal governor, you can change the P gain, the I gain, you can adjust it to whatever you want. You can land on the fly, plug in the box, change some values and take right back off. It doesn't get too much easier than that. There's also an wi optional Wi-Fi setup. They sell a little Wi-Fi connector, uh, just plugs into the same port as the fan, so you can't run the Wi-Fi and the fan at the same time. But you can tune from a tablet or a phone. It does it all over Wi-Fi. You can program, I think you can even do updates through it. So it's all wireless, makes it super simple, super easy. After that is data logging. So you can't look at it on a computer. As of currently, you cannot, but after a flight, you plug in the same program box and it'll show you uh, max current, average current, all sorts of different telemetry features if you want to see how many amps you're pulling, stuff like that. Lastly, the great thing is multiple sizes. They cover everything from a Goblin Fireball all the way up to a Logo 800, the, everything in between. I personally love the, the 130, that works great in a Goblin Thunder, and the 160. Great BEC, great governor. Next is Scorpion with the Tribunus and the Commander series, but mainly the Tribunus. So Scorpion has been doing ESCs since they've been around. I think they kind of rebranded some ESCs in the late 2000s, and then they came out with their Commander series, which was really nice. It was a super good ESC, super easy to use. Uh, the programming, sorry George, the programming was a little difficult at some point uh, with pressing the buttons and such. But I remember George Van Gensen, the owner of Scorpion, saying, you know what, I'm just going to redo the ESC from the ground up, and I want to come out with the best ESC I can. And he created the Tribunus, and it came out late in 2016, early 2017. And I'm personally using it on my machines, and I really like it. It's, it's been working really well for me. So here's some cool features about the Tribunus. So first and foremost, there's two different versions that they're pushing. A uh, 12S 130 amp edition, and a 14S 200 amp edition. 
So between these two, you can really select it for which helicopter you want. Uh, I'm running the 14S 200 amp on mine, and I haven't had any problems at all. So with the Tribunus, the first thing that I really like about it is the internal governor. I think, I dare say he's got the best internal governor mode out of any ESC that's out there. All I do is I set it to high performance or like a high gain setting, hit the button, go fly, and it's been awesome. The, the governor just feels really fast, really responsive. So I like that. The next thing is a powerful BEC. Um, I believe it's 10 amps continuous, possibly 15 to 20 amps peak, but I'm gonna double check that for you, and it should probably pop out right here on this little uh, text bar right here. You can see the specs. Okay, good, good. I was close, I was close. Uh, the next thing is a super easy setup. It's very simple. I'm using the V-Bar control, and that allows me to integrate with it extremely easy. And with the V-Bar control setup, I can do all my settings right from the radio. If you're not using a radio that has the telemetry built in and the V-Bar control, for example, you can just use their easy-to-use PC program. And I did a, a YouTube video on that not long ago. So if you just Google my name and Tribunus, you can find that if you're setting up a Tribunus and need a step-by-step -step instructional. The next feature that I really like is telemetry. There's all sorts of things you can see. Uh, everything from temperature, voltage, uh, it's got a, a milliamp counter built in internally, which is awesome because you can just fly to a milliamp rather than a timer, so you never over discharge your batteries. That's probably like one of my favorite features of the Tribunus. It's just awesome and really easy to use. Uh, the next, as I mentioned, is easy governor tuning. The governor works awesome and the tuning is just super simple. So the Tribunus also has a really small footprint. It's about yay big, if we're gonna be precise. Very small, so if you ever have a, a helicopter with a tight canopy or you don't have much real estate, the uh, small footprint is really nice. Uh, I've been using it in a Goblin 700 and a Logo 700 with zero problems at all. Uh, lastly, the Tribunus has data logging and the data logging works just really well. You can load it in, take a look at the graph. And we're gonna be looking at a data, uh, a data and analyzing a graph here in a future segment in this episode. And next up is Contronic. They're German made, and not only do they make heli ESCs, but they do a lot of stuff for the medical field. But as far as heli goes, they have two main sizes. They have a 160 and they have a 200. They're 12S to 14S capable, so they're very popular in the speed world. The, the 200 amp can do like 400 amp burst. So they work great for speed passes and speed flying and all sorts of big helis. Uh, outside of that, they have a super easy setup. You hit a button, you wait for four beeps, you go full throttle, that's it, done. Uh, there's no real tuning involved either. Uh, I used to run them back in the day and I remember I would just run stock settings and you never had to tune any of the gains, just mode four was just, it worked great. Uh, also it has a very strong BEC. Uh, there was never any issues, you can set it from like six volts all the way up to eight volts I believe. Super strong, no issues there. Um, but it comes with a price. It's the most expensive ESC on the market. I believe the 200 retails for like $850 to $900. So it's super high price, but then again, you get what you pay for. Uh, the reliability with the Contronics is usually really, really high. Um, outside of that, they have a uh, data logging as well. Uh, there's a micro SD card port on the side of the ESC. It's constantly storing, constantly remembering everything that's going on in the flights. So say you have a cutout, or say you want to see what telemetry is doing, or current, or amperage, or whatever, you can pull the SD card out using their program on your computer. You can look at the graph and see where something went wrong, or the current spikes, or anything like that. So that was Contronic ESCs. All right, that was it. That's the four main selections we have. Hopefully you can come up with what you want to use from there. How you guys doing? We're here at the 2017 Orlando Heli Blowout with our very special guest, Mr. George Van Gensen from Scorpion. How Thank you doing? You. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a microphone stand, uh, courtesy of Mr. Kyle Stacy. This is his uh, Goblin 700 tail push rod, which he broke earlier. And uh, so now it's our uh, microphone stand, like Bob Barker on The Price is Right. <laughs> very, very creative. It's good, it's good. So in this episode, we've been talking about uh, ESCs, all about them. And who else better to talk to than George from Scorpion? You are the designer of some very incredible ESCs. Yeah, it's, uh, it's many years of work and failure and test and failure and retest. And it has been a very, very long road. Yeah, so how hard is designing an ESC? Because it's not like you're designing a main gear 
or a blade. I mean, there's a lot to an ESC, right? It's very, very hard because it defies all electrical engineering rules. Really? You're, you're putting 10, uh, 10 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt of power into a box uh, like this, you know, yeah. and so it basically you, if you talk to a, a, a electrical engineering guy who has been working in, in industrial application, he will tell you it's impossible. It's no, it's not possible. Really? What you're doing is wrong. It will never work. Really? Yes, because you you don't have the space, you don't have the safety margin, you don't have this, you don't have that. It's simply not possible. Okay, so with an ESC, you spent a lot of time on your governor mode, and I know you take lots of pride on your internal governor mode. So what would you say to most guys out there, whether they're flying Contronic or Castle or Hobby Wing or Scorpion or whatever it might be, what do you recommend, internal governor mode in the, in the ESC itself, or do you recommend running your fly bar list governor? I can't speak for Contronic or any other brand. Um, speaking of my own controller, I will say the internal governor is a easier choice for everybody because it's plug and play. Yeah. Uh, external governor, it's good if um, if the user know how to tune it. Mm -hmm. If the user doesn't know how to tune it, they are not plug and play. There are there are a lot of tuning that you have you have to do to for it to to fly it right, and sometimes those tuning can. Uh, result to even failures uh. Uh, but just to give you an example on our governor um, we have over 120,000 detection per minute wow. on your head speed um, and on that 120,000 minimum detection per minute every detection will result in a correction Wow okay but when you are using external governor, uh, you are limited to the bandwidth of uh, the radio signal, sure. uh, which is 20 milliseconds. Wow. Okay, so 20 milliseconds uh, of your radio system, that's only like, what, 50 correction per second, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's not a lot of correction. So they, they rely a lot of feed forward because they know what you are doing with your control. But if your feed forward is too aggressive, or too weak or whatever, sure. your, your governor is not going to be working nicely. The internal governor is reacting to the load. Mm -hmm. So it's one step behind normally, but because external governor has, has this limit of this radio system, so they are not actually faster. Sure, sure. They can predict due to your movement, but they are not actually faster. The tuning process takes a lot more time and a lot more uh, testing. Sure. The internal governor, you plug it, you play it. And it works. And it's it easy. works. Yeah. And if you want to fly it harder, instead of default, you go hard. Yeah. And if you default is too hard for you, just go soft. And that's it. Yeah. One step. I like no. it. I like it. It's much easier. Yes. Cool. And very lastly, um, in this episode too, we're talking about uh, data logging and viewing and uh, reading a graph and understanding a graph. Do you use that often? I know you're a huge fan of speed flying. How useful is looking up a telemetry, a, a data logging graph and seeing what your model's doing? I think it's extremely important. Uh, by looking at a graph uh, item per item, flight per flight, um, you can see how your different battery is performing. You can, or if you have a, a abnormal amp uh, spike, for example, you might want to check uh, s your system. Maybe sure. it's mechanical, maybe it can be electrical. But um, checking your data log is extremely important for the well-being of your system. Sure, agreed. Okay. So Kyle's mentioning, uh, how about your a BS, a BEC? Very important, <laughs> obviously. So you chose to put a BEC in your new governor. That's kind of a bold move because you can easily just leave it out. So how hard is that, you know? Again, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy because you have to cope with all different kind of brand of servo or flight system and all different servo are built differently. Uh, some are good, some are bad, and you have to cope with every single one of them. Yeah. So in any, any flying 
radio control models, helicopter or airplane, even if you use a 2S LiPo or whatever type of system you're using to power your electronic, always, always have a backup system. Agreed. That is Agreed. absolutely mandatory. And if you don't have one, put one in. <laughs> OptiPower, Scorpion power, p Backup God, whatever, you know. <laughs> If you Just don't have it, you, you, you shouldn't even fly. Just use it. And in, in this episode, we actually talk about how to alert the pilot when the main power source has failed, using the radio telemetry settings or whatever it might be. Yes, that's that's, that is extremely important. Yeah. And so generally, uh, just like our design uh, philosophy is you have a lower... Uh, lower voltage backup system than your main system right. and then you you can set your telemetry as soon as your radio is warning you that your BC voltage is dropping that means right. you have a problem yeah. so you land immediately good stuff good stuff all right George anything else for our viewers here we talked a lot about ESCs in this episode anything you'd like to leave them like a final note perhaps about ESCs what should our what should our viewers here always be thinking about ESCs you know what do you have to leave them with Honestly, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, electric power models uh, heavily depends on your ESC, how to regulate it, how to fly your model. So always treat them nicely. No water, <laughs> black to black, red to red. <laughs> okay, like that's uh, very important. Don't let the smoke out. Don't let the smoke out. <laughs> Awesome. George Van Gensen from Scorpion. George, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, let's move on. We got, man, this guy's awesome. I love this guy. Thank you, guys. Thank let's you. move on here. All right. Now let's get into tuning. What I have here is my Goblin 420 with the Hobby Wing ESC. It's all set up, ready to go. It's in governor mode, but it's in the special governor mode that I mentioned earlier called Governor Store. Now what that does, like I mentioned before, is that with your worst battery and your best battery, it's going to hold the RPM no matter what. I've already calibrated that. If you don't know how to calibrate that, you put it at 50%, you let it sit there at an idle on the ground, just blade spinning mid-stick for about 10 seconds and you reboot. I've already taken care of that. Now it's time to tune. Now, with tuning a governor, it's pretty simple in the end. A lot of people overthink it, they try changing a bunch of values, but in the end it's just gain. The Hobbywing governor has two gains. It has a P gain and an I gain. Now with the V-Bar and other systems, it probably has just one singular gain that controls it, but with the Hobby Wing, it's two. So what I have here is the P gain and the I gain cranked really, really high. What I'll probably see is some motor chirping, some tail wag, and just inconsistent RPM overall. Now if it was too low, what I would see is RPM sag, like if I'm doing TikToks, the RPM might drop, or if I'm doing a hurricane, it's gonna drop really low. Whenever I load it up, like anything with like a lot of collective or a lot of cyclic, the RPM's gonna drop. But with high RPM, like if I'm doing a hurricane and loading it, it's going to try so hard to keep it the same that the, the motor is just going to chirp and it's going to be all over the place. So we're going to start with high gain. Let's get into it. So this is my high RPM. As you can hear, the motor is chirping. If you listen very closely, it does not sound smooth at all. And you can see there's a little bit of a bobble, a little bit of a tail wag if you can look closely enough. But overall, you can hear the chirping very clearly. We'll do some 3D and see if we can make it louder. So you can probably hear the tail wag there. That is just from the RPM changing so drastically, trying to hold it in one place that the tail is just wagging. So now we're going to lower the gain back down, go lower than it should be, and show you what it does. Okay, so we just fooled the governor gain way too high. We noticed the chirping, we noticed the tail wag. So now what I did is I used the Hobby Wing program box and I took both canes down really, really low. Now this is all arbitrary. It kind of depends on your pinion, it depends on your motor, it depends on your battery, your ESC, flying style, all that. This is just a general overview of what the gains do themselves. So we cranked them all the way down real, real low. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the RPM is dropping quite a bit. You can hear it lagging down behind. Now I know the ESC, the motor, and the battery combo have plenty of power to maintain the RPM. And it comes, it comes right back after it sags down. So I know that it's just a tuning parameter. That's all it is. Just gotta raise the gain back up and it should be good to go. <laughs> Kyle, what'd you do? 
I uh, didn't do so good landing. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Let's put the game back and then you can demonstrate that it act you can actually land. That I can actually land, yeah. All right. Now I got the game set back where it should be. Let's go do a flight and see how it performs. So as you can see, it held pretty consistent RPM throughout the whole little sequence of maneuvers there. You can see I do, in fact, know how to land, but that's properly set gain. Now let's move on to bailout. Okay, next up is auto rotation bailout. Now, bailout is something that I feel like is really underutilized. I did a quick poll this weekend at the flying field and asked the guys around, like, do you guys use bailout? Some of them didn't even know what it was, and the other guys just simply don't use it. So you, you might know what bailout is, you might use it, so if you do, excuse the, uh, just kind of the introduction to it here. But I, I really think it's worth mentioning, so we're just going to cover it here. So what is auto rotation bailout? Auto rotation bailout is a feature that a few ESCs have built internally and a few flight controllers have built in internally as well. So using the V-Bar control here with the V-Bar governor, they have it built in internally. If I was using my Tribunus ESC and the internal governor mode on the ESC, the Scorpion Tribunus has uh, auto rotation mode built in. The Contronic ESC has it built into their governor mode. Same with the Castle ESC has it built into their governor mode. So it's all over the place. Everybody has it, but I feel like not enough people are using it. So what is it? Okay, pretty much it's just a different way to shut your motor down. So if I'm spooling up my helicopter and I'm flying around, if I hit my throttle hold switch, which would normally send my motor back down to a idle, to like 0%, uh, what will happen is if I hit throttle hold and I don't have bailout enabled, and for whatever reason I need to spool back up fast again, as soon as I click back out, the ESC is going to think, okay, it's time to spool up, and it's going to spool up your helicopter nice and slowly as it normally does. But the difference is with bailout is we tell the ESC that, hey, we're going to be in this different mode where when I click back out, I want you to ramp up real fast. And so what that does is it increases the spool up time by like twofold or threefold, however fast you want it to be. So that's the beauty of it because we can go out and we can fly around, we can come in for a landing and for, for whatever reason, if, I'm, if my head speed's too low and I'm going to crash or a small child or small feeble dog runs onto the field and you're going to hit it and you need to spool back up and get out of the way, you want to use auto rotation bailout. Also, if you want to practice aerobatic autos, if you want to practice flipping out on the deck, if you want to practice some different things and you want to make sure that, you know, you've got at least a way to recover without crashing, you want to use auto rotation bailout. So it's really simple to set up. Setting up is different for every radio and every ESC out there, so we won't get into the setup, but I'm just going to show you what it does and how I use it. So um, I've got my V-Bar control here and my Logo 700. So let's demonstrate what uh, auto rotation bailout looks like. Okay, so first I'm just gonna spool up. This is my normal spool up rate. As you see right here, a few seconds, maybe eight, nine, 10 seconds for it to fully come up to speed. And I'll just go to my idle up one head speed. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click into auto rotation bailout. Then I'm gonna click right back out and watch how fast the head speed recovers. So bail out, back out, and you can see there I had a little tail kick and overall the head speed just ramped up really, really fast. So the beauty of that is once again, if I'm flying around and I do an auto and oh crap, I need to click back out real quick. It's, it's really nice. It makes the head speed come back up really fast. So that was just showing you in a hover. This is how I test it out. But let me show you what it looks like in an actual auto rotation and how we can actually use it. So I'm just gonna do an auto and then here towards the end, I'm gonna really give a lot of pitch and try to bleed the head speed as much as I can. Then click right back into bailout, back out of bailout, if you will. So I'm spooling up here. All right, so we'll go do an auto. 
So here we come doing our auto in bailout, coming down and bleeding the head speed. Okay, click back out. And there we are. Now we can go and fly again. So it's a really beautiful thing. It's a very simple feature. Once again, it's not used enough. So that's bailout. Check it out. I think you can, uh, it'll save some helis. And, 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 that's it. That's just using it with an auto rotation. Try hitting it in the middle of your flight. You can do uh, auto rotation TikToks if you wish. Uh, take a look at some videos we used to do. We used to just hit hold it all the time, way too much, way too. We abused it like the cracking stick maneuver, if you remember that. But you can fly around, hit a wall, and hit hold real quick, and it bleeds the head speed, then you click back out. So bailout's just awesome. It allows you to do some really cool things and really get creative with your flying and save your helicopter if you botch an auto. So that's bailout. Okay, let's talk about data logging. Um, a lot of the popular ESCs out there that we've been discussing this episode have the ability to data log. And that's whether they data log onto like onboard storage or onto a removable SD card or whatever it may be. A lot of the ESCs can spit out all sorts of information such as power, uh, amperage, voltage, temperature, time, and ripple. Uh, all sorts of good stuff that you want to see in your in in a graph. So they have a um, you, what you can do is you can download your file. You can see exactly what happened throughout a flight. So it'll show you you know amount of time. So it'll show you the beginning of the flight. Show you all the way to three or four minutes in, and you can select different things to view. So you can see your current. You could see your temperature if you wanted to, but. Since everyone has this feature, I know a lot of people don't really use it. So it can be really helpful to diagnose a problem or just to see how you're running. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to do a quick flight. We're going to do some basic maneuvers. Um, and then we're going to talk about, you know, analyze kind of the graph, take a look at it, see how my uh, helicopter's heating up, see how the head speed's changing, um, different things like that. So let's take a look at a graph after a flight. Okay, so let's get into the logging. So here I've got my uh, Scorpion Heli program right here. Uh, what I've done is I've already gone and did a flight for you guys, doing a few different maneuvers, showing um, you know, just a, a variation of things that we can do here. And I'm gonna play back that flight for you while we're looking at the graph. But before we begin with that flight, let's have a look here at what this Scorpion ESC offers. Now remember, um, Contronic and Castle also have this ability. I believe the Hobbywing does as well, or it's coming in, the, in future updates. But a lot of the ESCs out there have this right now, and it's super, super useful. So up at the top here, we've got different things that I can turn on and off. So along the bottom here, I've got my timeline. So here we're showing, um, I did about, I believe it's a two minute flight here. So down below the bottom, I've got my uh, time and then on the left side what you're gonna see here as I turn on my different um, options here you're gonna see uh, the value increase so this is gonna be a low value this is gonna be a high value so for example let's look at voltage for a second um, so here you can see that I started at 50 volts which is correct because I'm running a 12s helicopter and just for this uh, video keep an eye on this number right here the voltage um, so for example, voltage shows right there. So all of my values, wherever I'm pointing my cursor, you'll see this number change. So when I'm referencing different numbers, I'm looking over here. These are the numbers I'm looking at. So as one would expect, my flight started at 50 volts and I ended somewhere here around 45, 46 volts. My flight was only a few minutes, so I didn't run my pack down. And as you can see, throughout, I go, as I go throughout my flight, uh, my voltage is obviously going to spike low when I'm hitting it hard. So as you can see, these points right here, I hit my heli pretty hard and drain the voltage of the battery. Um, likewise, you can see when I turn on the current, um, you can see that in some places I'm drawing 120 amps. Here I did a big climb out and I'm drawing 213 amps for a little bit. So, And I'm just running a standard 700 class um, helicopter setup, nothing too fancy. And as you can see right here and here, I hit above 200 amps for a little bit. So going in and being able to see this data is so helpful. I normally don't do it unless I really have a problem with something, but just being able to see it really helps. Um, so I can turn on multiple things at one time. 
So as you can see here, I turn on voltage and current and take a look. When the voltage goes down, it just so happens that the current goes up. They're inversely proportional. Um, so these are things that you can just really see here. So that when I drew 213 amps, for example, I had, uh, I dropped down to 40 volts. So these are just, once again, really interesting things. Okay, so let's go ahead and play the flight and have a look at the data as the flight itself is going. So, as you can see, I had my Goblin 700 here, my Freedom Edition, thanks to Mr. K. And uh, as you can see, I'm spooling up. So as we would expect with my voltage here, as we're gonna spool up, it's just gonna dip a little bit. The voltage is just gonna drop. And we can turn on current as well. So here we can see some current spikes from this flight. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is some Mobiuses back and forth. The Mobiuses. And we can also look at my throttle to see how much throttle I'm giving. So I'd say we're right here for our Mobiuses back and forth back and forth. And remember, it's kind of a lot to look at at one time. So I'm going to hide a few things, maybe just play one or two things at one time. So here you can see my rainbows with the delay. So we're right in here with our rainbows, our big rainbows back and forth. So now we're slamming back and forth here. And as you can see, my voltage will drop down a little bit to around 42 volts or so. Now we're getting ready for a big climb out. Bam, right there. Now during that climb out, I just peaked at over 200 amps. And we can confirm that by looking at my throttle. Right here, I did full throttle for my climb out. Um, so now, you can see my current went back to hardly nothing while I was hovering. And then my current went up a little bit here to around 100 amps as I was doing my TikToks. So now we're just doing some smackdown, some low pyro flips. Now we're gonna be hovering and it's gonna be real low here. Current drops down. Now we're gonna go do some speed passes, some speed runs. So my first speed run here, we're gonna max out at 160 amps, which isn't too bad. I wasn't really hammering on it that bad. My voltage dropped to 42 volts there. Now this time we're moving pretty fast, it's as fast as I can get it going without much run up. And there we spiked it a little above 200 amps, around 210 amps. And lastly, we're climbing for an auto here. And we come down and the current's obviously uh, pretty low. I climbed up there, now we're climbing for our auto right here. So now we're looking right around here. We hit hold and as we hit hold and come in for our auto rotation, obviously our current drops. So that's the real time viewing of a flight of what just happened. So now that we could kind of follow along, let's take a look at some of the some of the intricacies here. Let's look at some interesting things. So if I turn everything off, let's look at throttle, for example. So as you can see here, uh, it starts at 30% um, because when it gets, the V-bar begins the spool up and then I hand over the throttle to the Scorpion. So it's gonna begin at 30% here and the Scorpion's gonna run up and run up. And then during my Mobiuses and such, I was right around 95%. Now remember, this is the throttle output here that the V-bar governor is telling the Tribunus to deliver power, to deliver throttle to the ESC. So it's not necessarily where my stick is, it's just what the flybar list unit is telling the speed controller. Um, so you could see here, really the only time that I maxed out my throttle was in my climbs and my speed runs. That's really the only time I maxed my throttle. And then here you could see when I was just hovering inverted, it was down at around 80%, which makes sense. Um, so let's see what else we have here. We have amp hours. Um, obviously, that's just going to be uh, a slow rising um, number here because we're just consuming a certain amount of milliamps over time. So that's almost a uh, nice slanted straight line. Um, temperature, we can see that I started at 22 degrees C and ended at 43 degrees C, which is absolutely just fine. I, it's pretty, it was pretty cool out today. It, temperature is absolutely fine. But this would be something great if your helicopter was acting up and maybe your speed controller was thermaling for whatever reason. Um, having this log would be awesome to, to be able to see. Um, power, once again, we can see here. So power is simply just voltage times current. So if we turn on power, voltage and current, you'll see they're all very closely related. 
thanks to father physics. <laughs> Next we have our BEC voltage. As you can see, almost perfect, almost extremely, extremely, like the same number practically. We dropped a tenth of a volt from 8.1 to 8.2 volts, so no big deal here. Um, RPM, our uh, governor is going to do its best to keep the, RP the same RPM the whole time, but of course it's never going to be perfect. So this is the motor RPM, so we'd have to convert it um, with a gear ratio to see how much the head speed's changing, but we had a slight variation in RPM depending on what we're doing. Um, this was most likely our overspeed. As we did an overspeed right here, our RPM's going to go up a little bit. So once again, this is just reviewing a graph, reviewing the logs, being able to understand it, because it's a lot. When you first look at it, you know, there's a lot going on here, and it's like, how do I understand wh what does all this mean? How do I understand it? So my recommendation would be if you want to look at your graph and understand your, your logs, close everything out. I usually stick with voltage first. Voltage kind of tells the story, kind of lets me know what's going on. And then I can add in some different menus here and some other, see some other values. Um, that really helps me understand exactly what's going on. So this is understanding a log and hopefully it can help you out. Uh, being able to send these by internet, you know, by email to a technician or to one of your buddies or post them on the forums is great because people can take a look at this and evaluate it and, and diagnose your problems for you completely remotely. So uh, this is uh, understanding a log and don't be afraid to use it. So hey, we made it to the end of the episode. We did it. And yeah. Milo uh, was here to help us the whole time yeah. with the filming of this episode. So if you heard any squeals or barks, <laughs> it came from this creature right here. This guy right here. Yeah, so I <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed. That was a little bit about ESCs and how far they've come in the last five years. Yeah. What do you think, Kyle? It's quite the episode. A lot of in-depth stuff, but I don't think we covered it pretty well. So what do you think? Electric or nitro? Uh, gas. Gas? <laughs> Really? <laughs> no, electric. Electric. I like the power. It's short flight time, but the power is fun. Yeah. Right here. I always yeah. go back and forth on it. I, I really do. There's no wrong answer. No, that's no, right. No, no yeah, wrong. and that's the, the whole thing with this stuff. I mean, we're just showing you what we do and our tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. And you guys might have some different, you know, opinions and different setup methods too. And feel free to share those with us as well. Because if it's good enough, we'll start to do it and, yep. and share it with you guys. Absolutely. So, uh, welcome. so yeah, so that's it for myself and Kyle and Mido and Mido of course we thank you guys <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next time for episode 33 yep all Thanks, right guys. take it easy guys see, see ya, ya. So now we're going to talk about ESC governors and V-bar governor and all sorts of different governors because governing is how we dictate life is via governing of certain governors and governing governors. Governing. Governor. Governing. Hi, my yo. So we're filming? Yeah? Uh -huh. Yep. And ESCs. who do we have uh, present? Our director and producer. Milo. <laughs> Yep. He's holding it down. He's adorable. So that was it. There was the four main selections we picked with. Hmm, nope, picked with, not a phrase. So that was it. That was the four main selections we picked. Hopefully from there you can come with up with what you want to use now. <laughs> come with up? <laughs> All right, come on, you got it, you got it. All right, go. here we go. All right, that's it. That's the more... Inf so this is the BEC part. I have to be all happy, happy. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? Unique New York. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about BECs. Road. We are rolling. We're rolling. Hello, everyone. Hey. Performance would probably be bad. The RPM would be all over the place, and it just wouldn't fly that well. So, without be with that... <laughs> I should just start over, shouldn't I? This is going to be bad, and it's just not going to fly that well. So, let's get into it. That's bad. I have a tiger. Who? Yep. So, cool uh, stuff. yeah, all in all, we're really excited about it and we're gonna get going here. So, hey! Milo! 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 Stop! Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Just put your hand up. Milo, what are you doing? We were doing so good. And then Milo decided to bark at this nice gentleman. 
We almost got a good take. We needed five seconds more. Milo. But I didn't want to rush it, so. Ted Milo. Now he's wild. Uh, probably out here. Okay, we're talking. Let's see how the wind is. We're talking. Hello. All right. So, how you doing, Kyle? I'm tired. Oh, you gotta be. You look tired. I'm tired. You got it. No, no, no. Need another you gotta, cold brew. You got a smile. My back hurts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. All right. So first up is. Make this a quick intro. No, I'm just doing the same thing. So. This sucks. You have to smile. You have to be happy. No, no need. He's not happy. No, I'm grumpy, Colin. Grumpy, Colin. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Forgot what to say. Okay. okay, we're good. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Smack Talk, episode 32. Yeah, yep. we made it. Yep, we're we got here. past 31. Yep, now we're on to 32 about ESCs. Yeah, this ESCs. should be a good one. Yeah, it should be cool. I'm yeah. looking forward to this one. As I'm for, uh, as, oh, sorry. We just, oh, we're Opto. And Opto is uh, just a, I, I don't know what it stands for, actually. <laughs> Do you know what it stands for, Kyle? No idea. All right, Kyle doesn't know what it stands for either. Opto is an ESC that doesn't have a BEC in it. So I've got my Scorpion Tribunus here, for example, and this thing is a EEC, ESC. Uh, let me start this whole thing over. <laughs> it's the first take. What could Opto even remotely mean? I have no idea what Opto means. I right, just cut it. we we'll do it again. Oh, what are you doing? So I'm smack talking because you forgot your lines. Thanks. All right. That was it. That's the four main selections we have. Hopefully you can come up with what you want to use from there. Let's move on to another segment. Let's move on to the next segment where Kyle doesn't have to talk. It's called the segment that Kyle flies. Oh my goodness gracious. 